Canadian professor and psychologist Jordan B. Peterson is a cultural critic who hates Marxism, political correctness and the radical left. Plus, he likes giving feel-good self-help advice like this. Life is a fatal disease. It's a concern. Jesus. He also says things like this. If you have your children in a school and they talk about equity, diversity, inclusivity, white privilege, systemic racism, you take your children out of the class. Hmm. More context and clips, please. Peterson gained national notoriety in the fall of 2016 when he spoke out about a federal bill on gender expression and a U of T policy to call students by their gender pronoun of choice. Why should your right to freedom of speech trump a trans person's right not to be offended? Because in order to be able to think, you have to risk being offensive. There are a lot of videos on the internet of you destroying or obliterating people. <laughs> and they get a lot of views. So if you could destroy me in this interview, we'd really appreciate You'd that. You'd like that? You'd... Yeah, and a lot of people watch our show. I can't guarantee it, but we'll see what happens. Do you ever watch those videos when you're feeling down about yourself? Do you just watch those videos and go, yes, I destroyed that no, person, no. I roll! No, no. Come on! No, 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 that doesn't happen. Let's talk about your book. Okay. It's 12 Rules for Life, an antidote to chaos. There it is. Now, uh, you've connected a lot with a lot of young men, lots of different people, but young men yep. particularly seem to you know, find something in your message. Yep. I'm a young man. I'd like uh, to be improved, please. Yeah. I want to stop being a pathetic weasel. Yeah, that would be good. Are you, are you a pathetic weasel? Well, I'd like to You seem to be like doing that. all right. I'm doing fine. Yeah, well, so you're not as pathetic as you might be. Rule one is stand up straight with your shoulders back. Yeah. I have terrible posture. Yeah. That's it's not it. so bad. Oh, maybe you have a good tailor and he's like <laughs> shouldered up your suit nicely. Are you flirting with me, Dr. Peterson? <laughs> well, not intentionally. Oh, you are my. very attractive, though. I feel so great. <laughs> I'm 28 years old. I can't yeah. cook. Yeah. I tried to quit smoking about six times. Rarely yeah. exercise. Yeah. Regularly use rec recreational drugs. Yeah. I'm a vegetarian who ordered butter chicken on the weekend. Oh, yeah. Haven't been in a relationship that lasted longer than a year since 2011. Hate yeah. my job. Uh -huh. Never remember anyone's birthday, still renting, don't know what Bitcoin is, haven't read a full book since 2012, yeah. including yours. Yeah. Thoughts? Oh, if I would have known that, I would have never showed up for the interview. <laughs> <laughs> Which part? Which oh, part the whole thing, the it's most? just a mess. It's fucking yeah, weasel, it is, it? pathetic it is. weasel. Yeah, yeah. There's, no excuse. There's no hope for you, I'm afraid. You're big on people cleaning their room. Clean up your room. I don't know how you can go out and protest the structure of the entire economic system if you can't keep your room organized. I don't clean my room, but I do pay someone to clean my room. Does that still count? Yeah, well, it's a metaphor, obviously, you know, and the thing is, it's not that easy to put your room in order. It actually requires a lot of thought. You have to think about your closet, all right? What should you be wearing? Where are you going to put everything? You no, know, you have to think about how you want your room organized so that you can do whatever it is that you want to do in there so that the room compels that and, or at least allows it to happen. And if you do it right, you learn a lot. And the thing that's interesting about it is you can actually do it. Most people have a room. It's like, there's a place to start, man. It's a little corner of the world that's actually under your control. So like, see what you can do with it. What are the limits of that idea, though? Because you can have a lovely clean room, yeah. but if for my generation, you know, we're looking down the barrel of climate change, we can't afford a house, some people can't get work, university education's unaffordable. Like, there are these huge, massive problems in society and the political economy that are also gonna, you know, screw us over in the big picture that the clean room isn't gonna necessarily fix. If you're gonna fix complicated problems, you have to learn how to fix simple problems first. Then you get good at it. I'm not saying that young people don't have things to be concerned about because life is a concern, right? I mean, it, life is a fatal disease. It's a concern. You're not on top of it. There's always more challenge than you can take on in some sense. But complaining about the structure of being and attempting to reorganize massive social structures, especially when you don't know the first thing about them, which is generally the case, is just not advisable. And the universities, you know, they teach young kids, young people, 19, 20 years old, that they should be out attempting to rectify massive social organizations. It's like, you wouldn't go and try to fix a cruise ship. You know, things are complicated. You can't set, it, set your own room in order. You can't set your own family, your life in order. What the hell makes you think you're ready to take on something like the political system? That's hard. You're gonna mess it up, man, for sure. I feel like now's a good time to let you know that the ABC is the home of postmodernism and neo-Marxist thought. And I've just got our equity and diversity plan here. Oh, uh, <laughs> I see. That's nice. You've got a little hammer you. and sickle on there, and that's, that's quite cute. The ABC's equity and diversity plan for 2016 to 2018 has targets of 50% women senior executives and 20% women technologists. Mm -hmm. Is that bad? Yeah. Why? Because the game of dividing human beings up by their group identity ends in disaster, no matter who plays it and no matter what the reasons are. <clears throat> that doesn't mean that, you know, in principle it might 
perhaps, who the hell knows, I don't know the internal workings of ABC, maybe it would be better if 20% of the women were technologists, maybe it's a radically misogynist organization, I tend to doubt it, but perhaps it is, and perhaps that should be rectified. But these sorts of quotas, they are a terrible idea for 50 different reasons. What about looking back over history? You've written the idea that women were oppressed throughout history is an appalling theory. They haven't had a great time though, have they? Who has had a great time in history? But men have had less of a Really, have time. they? Have they? By the what time? standard? By what standard? Well, I'm just saying if you're a woman... How about it, war? It took, yeah, but it took longer for women to get the vote, and women belong to their husbands, and in this country, one woman dies every week from domestic violence, a man dies like once a month, I believe, from that same cause. Like, aren't there some clearly obvious things that, that uh, women are there a victim there, of there as a result of their gender? There are inequalities in the catastrophes that the genders are subject to. And so, look, first of all, we, there's some things we've got to get straight. History is a rough business. Everybody had it rough. In 1895, the typical Westerner lived on less than a dollar a day, which is absolute poverty by today's standards, right? And so we, people were brutally poor for the, almost the entire course of human history. It was rough. You say, well, did men or women have it worse? It's like, well, you know, that's a complicated question. But you, one of the things you can say is everybody had it pretty damn bad. And, and apart from the pure catastrophe of existence that was shared, say, more or less equally between the genders, like, most of the time, men and women helped each other. Like women raised their sons, you know? Husbands protected their families. I'm not buying this whole, the sexes have been at each other's throats the entire history of mankind. It's like, no, wrong. And then one level deeper than that, I don't like the whole game. The whole game is, let's divide people into groups and contrast their oppression. It's like, fine, play it, see what happens. You're not gonna like it. We did that in the 20th century, right? The right-wingers pl played it in Nazi Germany and left-wingers played it throughout the communist world. And all that happened was that we stacked up the corpses, millions of them. It's not a good game. The equity game, that's a bad game. Bad game? Bad game. You don't want to read this just to be sure? Uh, if it says equity, it's a bad game. <laughs> because it means equality of outcome. Right. Like equality of opportunity, anybody with any sense is for that. Okay. For my bosses watching, I have read this and I fully endorse its message, and we'll continue the crusade, comrades. Who, who did the little cover design? Uh, Michelle Guthrie. Oh. Yeah. Very funny. Thank it's you. very funny. Um, Dr. Peterson, we're out of time. Thank you for destroying me. <laughs> <Yeah>. No problem. <laughs> Thanks for the interview. Of course. Enjoy yeah. the, your time in Australia. Thank you very much.